All right, so while I was filming my first Patreon video, um, I ran out of space apparently. I can't quite figure out this iPhone technology because I, I pay extra for extra space. I pay 99, 99 cents a month to get even more space. So I deleted a couple of my older videos and I think some of the stuff is going to iCloud. So I don't know how that all works out. I apologize, this video is going to be split into two videos now. So we've got part one, um, the true nature of Christ, and this is part two. This is going to be very brief because I pretty much said everything that I wanted to in the last video. Um, right when I left off, I was talking about in the Illuminati, and you can get the book if you want. Uh, check out my YouTube video on the Illuminati. I talk about it in that video um, where it has the documents of all the original documents pretty much for the most part um, from the original Illuminati that Adam Weishaupt had formed in Bavaria, in Bavaria Germany. And um, when you reach the higher levels in the Illuminati, you find out that Hiram Abiff is really Jesus. They're synonymous. It's the same thing. The main character from Freemasonry, the architect of King Solomon's temple, Hiram Abiff and Jesus are kind of one and the same because um, he's a martyr as well. This whole martyr type energy, um, different martyrs throughout history, different deities that sacrifice themselves upon a cross or some people say that Jesus wasn't even uh, crucified on a cross. He was um, burned at this. Well, some say he was burned at the stake. I think it's mostly Jewish people that say that. Um, so yeah, there's different, there's different accounts, but the whole general archetypal idea is the savior dies upon the cross and the cross is kind of this universal symbol that really to me represents the axis point. Like you are, there you are in the middle, the source of your own existence. Now the cross is the four elemental directions, um, the four elements, the four cardinal directions, it can mean many other um, different things. Even when you play video games and you have like a, a classic D-pad, directional pad, it's up, down, left, and right, so the main directions. <coughs> when you um, stand up, as we know in the Kabbalistic cross, when you spread out your body, uh, it forms a cross, so there you are again. Um, so there's a lot of symbolical significance to that. You start getting into like Rosicrucianism and the rosy cross. Uh, the Rose Croix of Freemasonry, look into that a little bit. So that you have these different saviors, Jacques de Molay, he was the Grand Master of the Knights Templar, burned at the stake on Friday the 13th, you know, that whole story. So there's these different martyr or savior archetypes that take on this Christ energy. They end up being kind of like a good shepherd. So there's times to make sacrifices and then there's times where it can also be detrimental. Um, so I think that pretty much, this is a really short video because I was about to end the video in like another maybe 10 minutes at most in the last video. So that pretty much concludes, you know, I think I pretty much like rambled on as much as I can, um, about, oh, there is one, there is one other thing that just came to mind. There's so much, I have little knit, I just have so many little tidbits and nuggets of information, like golden nuggets, <clears throat> that I picked up from reading lots of different um, books over the years. I've, re I've just read and read and read and consumed information and tried to learn more archetypally about how I can understand the energies within myself, how I can understand them in the universe, and then try to convey that information to others because book knowledge is only going to get you so far um, and then you need to actually put that into practical application. Um, we're not just meant to be these beings that meditate in a cave forever. Like you would have profound experiences. You would either die or you would transcend your consciousness to, um, higher, higher levels than, um, you know, they were limited to before, but you got to be able to use this information in a practical way. But in Cannabis, Magical Herbs, and the Occult, Liber 420, it's a book about cannabis. They talk about how in the um, Sanctum Sanctorum, 
of the um, tabernacle, you know, where the priest goes in, like I think maybe it's once a year, and they commune with Jehovah, they would burn cannabis plants and the fumes from the plants they would inhale and then they would have their visions that way. And that's how they would convey, you know, their messages and stuff. So very interesting information in that book. Check that out. Cannabis, Magical Herbs, and the Occult. I think I've done like one video talking about that a little bit. One or two videos on my YouTube. But there's a theory in that where Jesus actually drinks this Soma drink or this cannabis-infused drink. And it puts him in a sleep paralysis for like three days. <clears throat> so he's asleep. And um, they think he's dead, so they bury him. And then his disciples come in later and wake him back up, bring him out of that stasis. So that's a very interesting theory as well. But really all around, like the whole Jesus, the resurrection thing, the whole idea is to do that within your lifetime. To die and be reborn while you're alive. You're not supposed to like wait for death and then there's this whole thing. You do that while you're alive. And then, of course, the grand initiation. Of course, there's a grand initiation that takes place, you know, when we try, when we, our souls go from one experience to another. Really think of it more as moving through densities. And I'm going to do a YouTube video or maybe a Patreon video on densities at some point. Um, how we're not literally like, it's not so much about physically moving from one place to another. It's more about how our soul experiences um, shifts through densities. Um, sh uh, shifting through different densities. Um, so yeah, this whole resurrection theme with Hiram Abiff and the Master Mason degree, very akin to this whole Christ energy, and we are supposed to take that into our own lives, resurrect through understanding and knowledge and understanding you know, new things, and sometimes it takes a sacrifice. Sometimes it takes a sacrifice of what we might want in the moment. Sometimes we have to leave old habits, old things behind, leave you know, certain friends do new things, things that are more in resonance with who we truly are. And, and then that way we kind of like resurrect ourselves and we come into new versions of ourselves. We go through a death and rebirth um, process in life. And of course, there's a lot of analogy between that and, um, you know, different sacraments such as ayahuasca, DMT, you know, even different psychedelics, you know, you have a death and rebirth type experience. So that's a whole different subject in and of itself as well. Um, so I'll go ahead and end the, the whole video here. So this is the end of part one and part two, um, understanding the true nature of Christ. And um, I want to thank you very much for um Hopefully this video works. I'm going to go ahead and try to post it to Patreon. So if that is the case, any of you have watched this video on, on my Patreon, thank you very much for supporting. It means the world. Um, it really does. Um, even if it's just a little bit of um, like casual income, like on top of, you know, I have a normal daytime job that I do as well. So that means a lot. Like I love you guys for being part of like the soul family. We're all growing together. We're all raising in consciousness raising in vibration. Sometimes it's it's not all about high vibes too. We got to work on the lower density vibrations too. So for me, grounding and getting back into the physical, I was up in the cosmos in the so high up in the different dimensions for so long that I kind of like, you know, lost my grounding. So now I'm actually working on the lower vibes. So which isn't a bad thing. It's just more of the negative polarity or the the more physical um, more here and now type energies. Anyway, I'm still rambling. So thank you all for being a part of this. It means the world to me. I love each and every one of you. We are all having a unique, awesome experience on this planet. We're living, we're growing, we're learning, and our souls are going to continue to move through existence until the end of time. And then even beyond, when we, when we reach the end, there's another initiation. There's another journey. There's another story. So it goes on and on and on, the never-ending story. So thank you everyone so much for contributing, for um, following my content. It means the world to me. Thank you all so very much. Um, and keep an eye out for more material coming soon. And until next time, peace and love, everyone. Thank you so much.